A lot of us modern workers spend the entire day at a computer on the internet. It's like we need this thing for work, but at the same time, we're addicted to it. I work as a web designer and all of our tools are online now. Figma is our main design tool and it's all in the cloud. I don't even know if it works without the internet and it's great because we never have to worry about saving. We never have to worry about backing up files. Collaboration is easier than ever uh, with Slack and email and all the amazing tools we have. But it also opens us up to endless distraction. We're all sitting here working all day, just one click away from this vast universe of every interesting thing, every polarizing discussion, every amazing product the world has to offer. So this, this is our impossible situation. We need the internet. We can't just stay off of it but at the same time, we're all highly addicted to it. There are mornings where I sit down to work and I got up early, I worked out, I ate a healthy breakfast, showered, sometimes even meditated. I'm in a prime state and I think, I'll just check this one thing really quick and I'm immediately pulled into some distraction. So here are a few things that I've been doing that have actually helped me a lot and they all circle around this theme of intentionality. The first is this Chrome extension called Bonjour, which changes the home page on a new tab to a nice photo with a clock little greeting. I realized that every time I opened a new tab, I instinctively wanted to go to Instagram or go to YouTube or go to Reddit because of this wonderfully helpful feature of the suggested websites. As a product designer, when we're designing a new tech product, we're always thinking, how can we reduce friction? How can we make it easier for the user to do what they're here to do? So I can understand why they put those suggested sites there, but for us, to be productive, we need to unwind some of these features and put a little friction in the way. The next is the highly recommended DF tube. I've heard a lot of YouTubers talk about this one. People like Thomas Frank and Joey Schweitzer from Better Ideas. There's this crazy statistic that like 70% of YouTube views are from recommended videos. DFTube hides all recommended videos. You can still go to search and to your subscriptions and history, but it makes it a lot easier to stay on task. A lot of us use YouTube for research pur purposes. You just don't want to get sucked in when you do that. There's something like this for Instagram called Instagram Wall Eradicator. You can choose to hide stories or the main feed or both. And wow, I did not realize how much I check Instagram. I would go to check Instagram and get to this empty page and remember, oh yeah, focus. The next one is a very simple trick and it's just to hide your bookmark bar. I'm very much an out of sight, out of mind kind of person. If there's a plate of cookies on the table, I will eat them all until they're gone if they're you know, in sight. The bookmark bar is an easy way to access a lot of our favorite time wasters. So the shortcut to hide the bookmark bar is Command Shift B. The next one is also incredibly simple, but it has worked wonders for me, and it's to set a timer. You start to wander, then remember, shoot, my timer's going. I realized how effective this could be when I had this hard work project I was working on. I decided I'm gonna do this for one hour. I set a timer for an hour, started working, kind of lost track of time, and pretty much finished the project. Got it to the point where I was ready to get feedback from my team, and I checked the timer. It had been 23 minutes. Short, focused bursts are everything. The next one, we hear productivity people talk about all the time and it's to turn off all notifications. And if you're anything like me, this is not possible. If you work a full-time job, you just can't get away with that. Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week recommends checking your email like once a week, like every Monday afternoon, he's hopping on to check his email. And for us, like that'd be great, but maybe right now, not, not possible. But there are ways that we can apply this one and we should because notifications are like the opposite, the anti-intentionality. We just open ourselves up to the whim of all these people trying to contact us. But there are some realistic ways that we can apply this one that have been helpful for me. And one of them is to turn off all notifications in short bursts of time. So you set your timer and you work for an entire hour and you turn off all notifications for that hour. People at work trying to contact you, I mean, for all they know, you're in a meeting. This really allows you to focus and not be pulled away by other distractions. Another way that we can apply this is to turn off all notifications that aren't critical. So for me, Slack is critical. I have to be available on Slack for developers reaching out to me with design questions or product managers with some time sensitive issue. But iMessage, is not critical and it's not time sensitive. So if you need to just sign out of iMessage on your computer, if there's an emergency, my wife is gonna call me. So for me, iMessage is one that I can definitely turn off. Obviously all social media notifications, all sports updates, I don't know. I don't know what else people are being notified about, but if it's not critical, turn it off. The last thing that's been super valuable for me is to take breaks away from screens. Everything we do is on a screen now, our work and our leisure. We go from screen to screen to screen. 
and we need to come up for air in the physical world every now and then. So whether it's to take your dog on a walk or read a book or just look out the window, taking breaks from the screens has gotta help. And that's it. Let me know what you do to focus your crazy, distracted monkey brain. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video and you wanna show a little love to me, to the channel, then just go ahead and like the video. The likes actually go a long way in telling YouTube, hey, this is a good video. You should recommend it to other people. And if you do, I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next video.